Hi guys, welcome to another one of my videos. This is Fabi Gonzalez with Cobo Banker West. And if you're thinking of filing a bankruptcy or you have done it already and you're thinking, okay, what's next? What's after bankruptcy? Then this video is for you. It's definitely gonna help you out. So let me tell you, what is a bankruptcy? So when you've had a business that didn't do that well and now you're just losing money and you're behind on the payments because you're not making enough money to support the business, you're able to file a bankruptcy on that business. So you're gonna go in front of the court, in front of the judge, and the judge is gonna decide if they let you off the hook with all those bills that you have. You can also do it as a person. When I did it myself, I did it as Fabi Gonzalez. So I was filing for bankruptcy because everything was under my name. So I didn't really have anything under my corporation. It was mostly done under my social security number because what I had lost was a lot of property and they were all under my name, not under the corporation. So that was a mistake on my part. I would probably never do it that way again, but that's the way I did it. And so I had, I had to file bankruptcy as a person, but I'm not as a corporation. So I did it because I had, I think it was like eight, nine properties that had foreclosed. And I didn't, I wanted to clear my record because I wanted to buy more property again. So I needed to start fixing my credit. And when you file a bankruptcy, your credit goes to like 400 sometimes. Not all the time, but sometimes. Now I didn't have a lot of credit card debt. So to me, it wasn't much about the credit card. It was more about clearing my foreclosures and I did return two cars that I had uh, on a lease and I need I needed to return them there's no way I could afford them at the time so I took advantage of this bankruptcy law which is there I mean the millionaires use it and that's how they stay, stay millionaires because they're thinking wisely they're thinking as business owners they're not taking it personal so don't take it personal don't care what other people think if this is what's what you need to do to start from scratch and clear your credit do it because without credit you won't be able to purchase a home unless you're going to buy it cash or a car anything else so you, you know here in the u.s we live off credit we want to make sure that we have a good credit score so is it necessary to file a bankruptcy well it all depends like if you have a lot of debt Let's say you owe, you know, sixty thousand dollars total, and you're only making eighty thousand dollars a year. Yeah, it'll probably be impossible for you to pay it off and clear your credit. But if you owe ten thousand dollars and you make eighty, ninety thousand dollars a year, then definitely you don't need to file bankruptcy. You can get into a payment plan and pay it off. I don't think a judge will, will approve it anyways. So. It depends how much you owe and see if there's ways to go around that and start clearing. Like if you have too many collections and you know you're not gonna pay them off, then also, you know, maybe it is a good idea to file for bankruptcy. I'm not an advisor for that. I'm not a financial advisor or an attorney or a CPA. So you might wanna sit down with your attorney, your CPA, your financial advisor and go over your options. But let's say you decided to do a bankruptcy. So when I did mine, I wanted to fix my credit immediately because I wanted to buy another property. So what I did is I bought one of those Capital One cards. I remember it cost me like, I think $75 a year that I had to pay to have that credit card. Now, think about it. I never had to pay for a credit card to get it. I would only pay if I had a balance on it. So kind of paying to for them to give me a credit card was like a change for me, but I did it because I wanted to get those points back on my credit score. So I got the card from Capital One and it was only, I think it had a limit of $300. Obviously, you know, I just filed for bankruptcy. Who's gonna wanna lend me money? So I did, I got that card for $300 and I would use it once a month. I would use it for like $80, $90. You should never use it for more than 50% of the limit on that credit card. The minute you go to 160, 170 on a $300 uh, credit card, you're not gonna get bad credit. You're just not gonna get enough points to build up your credit. So remember, you're doing this to build credit. So you wanna pay it off at the end of the month completely. Every month you pay it off completely and you only use it for less than 50% of that limit on that card. Another thing that I did is I bought a car. Yes, the interest rate was really high, but you know, when you have bad credit, the only person that is gonna lend you money is probably a car salesperson 
because that's what they do. You know, they get you along with a really high interest rate. And that's how I got my car with a really high interest rate. But I didn't care because I thought I'm only going to keep this car for a year. I'm going to trade it in again in a year and I'll get a low interest rate. So that's what I did. I kept it for a year, making my payments on time every month. And at the end of that year, I went back I traded it in. I think I went to another dealer. I didn't stay with the same one traded in the car and got a 2% interest rate. So then I was back to a low payment on my car and I had good credit by then. You know, I think I was at like, like 680, I believe. 680, 650 around there. And it went pretty quick. As I continued to do that, that credit card of $300, they increased my limit. I think it was later they sent me that it was at $700 credit limit and then I had 1,000 and then 1,500 and then I ended up getting another one because I had good credit by then so I was able to have two credit cards. Just remember if you're doing this for your credit pay them off completely at the end of the month. Do not keep a balance of your credit cards. Do you want to do that so you can be making points? Now you know the saying that how it goes if you fall off a horse you need to jump on the next one as soon as you can because otherwise you're going to be fearful. You're going to create this fear and you're not going to want to jump on a horse again. So that's the case with many people that had bankruptcy or that lost homes. They're afraid to do it again. They think, well, you know, I don't want to buy a house again because the same thing's going to happen. I'm going to lose it again. And in the meantime, many other people are buying their homes. They have equity again. Now they're being smart about it. They're paying their mortgage on time. They're trying to pay it off instead of refinancing and getting all the cash out every year when they have equity. They're actually trying to pay off their home. So just remember, just because it happens once, it doesn't mean that it's going to keep happening. But you have to be wiser. You have to make better decisions based on what you learned from the last time. Okay, so the other thing is run your credit like every six months and see where you are with your points. If you're making enough points, I would advise you to sit with a lender and have them run your credit and go over your report. And if you see anything there that was supposed to be removed with the bankruptcy and it's not, then you need to get your paperwork and go talk to your attorney that is doing your bank, that did your bankruptcy. So you, they can review it with you and find out what you need to do to clear those things from your credit because they were part of the bankruptcy. If you need a good attorney for bankruptcy, give me a call. You know, I have a couple of names. I have one that I worked with and she was amazing. So if you need that um, reference, please give me a call and I'll be happy to give you her number. And uh, the other thing is keep all your documents. When you file a bankruptcy, these are paperwork that it's really hard for you to get a copy of them. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you want to make sure that you keep all those papers, every little thing, keep them in an envelope, in a box, and just, you know, label it bankruptcy paperwork. Stick it in your garage or somewhere where you're not going to see it unless you need it. So that's my advice. Hopefully this helps. If you know anybody that could benefit from this information, please make sure you share this video. Make sure you like my YouTube channel and you share it with your friends. I'll be trying to, um, to post. This was a question that I had today from one of my uh, Facebook friends. They wanted to know what happens after bankruptcy. So um, because of her, I created this video. So if you have any questions, please let me know and I'll be glad to explain it, whether on a phone call or on another video. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.